One factor all the children have to deal with is being branded a 9-11 kid. Okay. When someone meets me, I want them to know me for who I am. All that unnecessary attention, I don't think it's needed. I don't want people to say, oh, I'm sorry. I've heard that enough times. I just don't like labels, being labeled as a 9-11 kid. I mean, that's just so there. There's so much more to than just a 9-11 kid. At school, I get very upset if somebody brings it up or if we have to read about it. At school, it hits me hard because I'll sit in the middle of the class, I'll sit somewhere, and if somebody says 9-11, all their heads will turn and look at me. And I'll be like, no, that just made me feel so much better, you guys. Like, it's like, so then my teacher will be like, you can go step out. And I'll be like, I don't want to step out. I don't want to be the one who everybody looks at and everybody is like, well, Caitlin lost her dad, like stuff like that. I don't want to be known as the girl who lost her dad in 9-11. I want to be known as the girl who's crazy and outgoing and loves life. Good girl. One thing that I've encountered most is, like, kids at school will, like, like, assholes at school will, like, rip on me for it. So, I mean, that's, that's actually how um, I got suspended the first time back in middle school was for fighting, and it's for kids saying the wrong stuff to me. Um, the first kid ripped on me for not having a dad. Another kid, I, like, called him a name, and he was like, oh, at least I got a full family just along those lines and then and I like compare myself to my friends and it's like nothing. Like they're like, they live in like a flower field and under like a bubble and nothing gets to them. And I feel like it's weird. Like I'm dealing with so much, like how can I just be normal? Getting away from the 9-11 label was one reason the Chowdhury's moved to Oklahoma in 2002. Another was to escape the simmering anti-Muslim feeling in New York. A lot of people still have Islamophobia. They still have a picture of all Muslims being terrorists. But I would say here everything's more calm and I'm able to keep a balance between being a modern Muslim girl and just being a normal teenager. Mom? Bye, on YouTube. Fahina is a moderate Muslim. But in the wake of 9-11, many people don't distinguish between ordinary Muslims like her and the Islamic terrorists who carried out the attacks. These aren't real Muslims, I mean. They're not what our religion is about. I feel proud about my faith and I just wish people would know more about it. These men did this thing, gave Muslims such a negative look, and of course they took my father, but, you know, I can't do anything to change it. I certainly do not know anyone who is of that religion. I know that they're not all bad, but they killed my father, and that and 10 million stars from innocent Muslims will not, no. You are so jumpy. I thought I haven't known you in ages and I forgot how jumpy you are. <laughs> how can you forget me? <laughs> Five years after Justin Strada lost his father, his family faced more heartbreak. Justin was diagnosed with a brain tumour. No, even I haven't had chemo in two weeks, and that feels like 
Oh. My tumor is this big, and it is called a juvenile polycytic astrocytoma. And not many people can pronounce that. JPA, that's for short, and I'm just plain annoying. It's just shrunk, but now it's like staying there, and it won't go away. <laughs> I want to kick my tumor in the face. I want to take a poo on it. <laughs> take a big, big poo on it. <laughs> Now let's go see what we did. I act like a normal kid. I had no hair at one time, but then it grew back. To be beautiful and flushes. Justin is now in remission. Every summer, he and his siblings attend a special camp for 9-11 children in upstate New York. Camp Hayes was set up by a couple who lost their eldest son on 9-11. Children felt responsible for the parent. They didn't want to make their parent sad, you know, um, so they felt if they were crying, you know, then their parent would start crying. When they were away from their home environment and they were here, they can be whatever they wanted to be. In all honesty, like, I love everyone who goes here. We all came from different backgrounds and different places and, you know, completely different lifestyles. And everyone, like, was the same. People in the woods, are you ready? We all could deal with each other's experiences. Like, we all knew what we had all been through. And just that was, like, almost, like, healthy for all of us. Camp Hayes just kind of gave me the courage to embrace people again and just, you know, understand that we're not alone here and we have people like us, you know? Because sometimes, you know, my friends at home, they're great, but they don't understand, you know, that and they don't understand like how I'm feeling. But you know, when I'm at Camp Hayes, we don't have to talk about it. If we want to, we can. And if not, you know, we're just around each other and just, you know, being happy with the fact that we're around good people. It's just awesome. I feel a bond with these campers that I don't feel with anyone back at home. I can't imagine ever straying away from this place. When I'm too old to be a camper, I want to work here. I don't want to leave. I don't want to grow up. I want to keep coming here. Everybody smile. One, two, three. But camp doesn't suit everyone. Caitlin Langone is now 22. She's learned to cope with her loss alone. I don't have any friends that have this background. It makes no sense to be like, oh my God, your dad died on 9-11, my dad died too, let's be friends. Like, I hate that. Like, what a horrible premise for a friendship. Like, I can't stand that. That's, I mean, this is just me, though. Like, I don't like being like, oh, this, this one thing happened to you guys, you all should get along. Like, it's one thread of my identity. It's not the thing that defines me. Caitlin wants to safeguard her father's memory by getting a tattoo. Hi. What do we got today? We would like to do a memorial tattoo in memory okay. of my father. Uh, he passed on 9-11, so the design that I have in mind here is pretty much entirely based off of 
his work in ESU. That's the emergency services unit. The real reason I picked this though is the freeze down at the bottom here, anytime baby, because that's the motto of ESU. And like when I think of my dad, I think of like Mighty Mouse, you know, like what seems to be the problem? Like, I'm here to rescue. Like, yeah, like Superman, like I'm ready to go. Like yeah. daddy really was like anytime baby. Like it doesn't matter what time you called or what time the alarm went off. He was like, let's go. They used to call awesome. him Captain Adrenaline at his truck. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's hard. It's hard. I just keep, son of a bitch. <laughs> I just keep thinking about how proud I'm gonna be when it's done. The tattoo is like a badge of honor because, you know, this hurts. Like, it fucking hurts. Like, let's be real. So, you know, that's kind of cathartic because it's as bad as it can hurt on my leg. Like, this pain is temporary and it will go away. Like, the pain of losing daddy never goes away and it's never going to. It gets a little easier to deal with over time. But I would give everything in the world every single thing in the world just to give my dad a hug again. I mean, like, I really like it when I see that cat and, like, like that cat, it's just, it makes me think of daddy. But it feels right, because it, feel, it just feels right having him. Like, I have him always in my heart, but now I have him in a place where I can see him. So that feels right, too. I'm just happy. Like, I don't have words. I'm just like, no. <laughs> Rodney Ratchford is now 21. Five years ago, he was selling drugs on the streets of Northern Alabama. You can't go around being mad for forever. I mean, it don't make no sense. So yeah, I done seen a lot of friends go to jail. I seen a lot of friends die. But needless to say, I'm still here. When he was 16, Rodney left his father's home and moved 250 miles south to the city where his mother was raised, Mobile. Mobile is just really historical though. I mean, it's a great place. You know, think about it. Martin Luther King, they marched down here, you know? It's even for me to even be around here, it's wonderful. That's why I say this is almost like just a first place of home to me. We gonna go? I'm gonna push out the wall. We're gonna swim really fast up on the water, okay? Now you gotta hold on to my neck. Now Real Rodney tight. has his own family. Ready? Set? Hold your breath. <laughs> He's been living with his partner and stepdaughter for four years. I met this little lady. It was a real crazy. I met her on Facebook. We was talking for about six months, and she finally was just like, why don't we just move in together? So, I did. I'm more of a family man now, you know? I try not to stay in the streets. Try to stay as far away from them as possible. Show you guys the apartment. This is my Mukasa, Mikasa, Sukasa. Coming in right here, you have my living room. As you see right here, this is mine, all mine. This is my kitchen. It's a beautiful thing, something I work hard for. It's my house, my life, my rules. You guys take your shoes off at the front door. <laughs> but no, this is it. It's not that much to some people, but to me, it's mine. You know, I got a place where I can I know I can come home and I got a place I can call home and I'm not sitting outside in the rain or starving, nothing like that, so I'm happy. Rodney earns a living as a manual labourer. It's an $8 job, $9 job, $12 an hour job. I got to work it if I can get it. 
special compensation funds were set up in the wake of 9-11 to support bereaved families. But since moving to Mobile, Rodney has had to fend for himself. I've been working for everything I got. I haven't had one dime from the government for anything. Everything I got came from these hands right here. No, I'd rather do what she raised me to do anyway, and let's get out here and get it myself. I always had faith of one thing, and that was God ain't gonna put you through nothing that you can't handle. I just think about that, you know? If I'm at work and there's something tough, and I say, man, can't nothing be worse than someone losing their mom, you know? So I say, man, I, I, can, I can get through this. I can get through anything, you know? Many children, like Caitlin Langone and her brother, did receive compensation for the death of their parent. But the money has brought little solace. The thing that always got me really angry too with the, what I call the horribly immoral economic compensation money that we got was like, my friends would bitch at me. Like when I got my car, they'd be like, oh, you're so lucky you got a new car. I'm like, this is blood money that paid for this car. You think I'd have a car, I'd rather have a car than my dad? Are you yeah. kidding me? Like, like, are you kidding me right now? trade that one. Oh yeah, like I totally would rather have a, you know, our house redone than my dad. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, that is the most insensitive thing I've ever heard from people. And people who are my friends would say that. In all fairness, yes. people lose their parents every single That's day. A big and, like, we're fortunate to have gotten as many opportunities as we did. It, just, it gets me so frustrated with the way that they, like, people act. But the money enabled Caitlin to leave home and attend university. She's just graduated with an English degree from a college in upstate New York. College was really good for me. You know, because I wasn't so far away from mommy that I felt kind of panicked about it, because I am very close to her. But I was far enough away where I was able to kind of get a hold of my own independence and, you know, gradually start to learn how to do things on my own. There's still stuff that confuses me, like, you know, insurance forms and things like that, or like, I have to have mom explain certain things, but like, you know, I messed my car up, so like I had to do all that by myself, call the tow people, call AAA, call the insurance, call, and I did it, and I didn't panic, I didn't freak out, and I handled it very, and I was like, you know, I am damn proud of myself. I did a grown-up thing. To keep her company, Caitlin has adopted a rescue dog, Wesley. Good boy, drop it please. Drop it please. Thank you. Sit please. Oh yes. Yes, good boy. That's the best part about having a dog, something that absolutely loves you and freaks out every time you come home. They're just like, oh my god, you're back. And he's so excited. Every morning too, the happy dance that I get when I wake up, priceless. Utterly priceless. That's the best part about having a dog. Most weekends, Caitlin makes the 180 mile round trip to visit her mother. Let's go, boy. Go ahead. Hi, TJ. Hi, Caitlin. Caitlin. How are you? Mm. I missed you. I love you. Sorry. I love you too. I love you. Come in. Sure. Hey, Wesleyan. How are you? Careful, careful. Go inside, please. No, it'd be nice to spend a day together with, you know, the two of you. Stop licking your feet. Stop. Actually, I like what I would really like to do is you, Brian, and myself go away for like a little vacation like we used to do. Obviously, I love coming home because mommy's here and this is my home, but this was my family home. Like, this was my family's home. I can't turn around in this house without seeing a picture of him and then remembering what I don't have now. As a kid, I was a happy-go-lucky kid. I hugged people all the time. Like, I loved to give hugs. Nice. Hey. Oh, good girl. I will never know what I would have been like if he was still here. I'll never know what life would have been like if he wasn't gone. You look down your entire life. 
my middle school graduation, my sweet 16, my high school graduation, my college graduation, possibly getting married, possibly having kids. Like, daddy should be there for all of it. Now he's not. Everywhere he should be, he's not. Uh, we wouldn't let him get any closer, but his friend is the one he had the closest bond to. So that was the best uh, link and easiest part of our negotiations. This is like, oh, oh, it's like when, even when he speaks, it's like, I can't. Like I real like I don't know like it's been still like ten years I still quite can't get my head around like daddy not being around. I know it upsets you, mommy. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. It's okay. At least we had him, right? Yeah. And we got him away nobody else had. He was like, my daddy and your husband. Oh, that's special. Yes. Like other people had him as a colleague, sure, but we got the better end because we got family daddy too. Yeah. And rescue daddy. Yeah, like it's a good day's work. Oh yeah. We got the guy and nobody got hurt. That's a good day's work. All of the ESU officers said it's just another day's work. And the instructions for this, like, John Freeman collection dream girls, it said to scrunch your hair, and I don't know how to do that, so I The Burnett girls are now young teenagers and living in Arkansas, where their mother grew up. The family moved here the year after 9-11. Oh, hey! It was a hard transformation going from, you know, losing a parent and then moving schools, moving states. Excuse me while I die of shame. But I really do think that I've enjoyed the change. Anna Claire, I'll be the line. <laughs> All right, on three. Here we One. One, two, three, go! <laughs> I can't even get Toby started. <laughs> We goof off all the time, <laughs> believe it or not, but my mom actually has a sense of humor. <laughs> all right, that was not fair. Hallie couldn't even get Toby to go. <laughs> I'll talk to her about anything and everything. Yeah. She knows the line between being a friend and being a mom, and I really respect her for that. It's like I can talk to her about something going on in my life, and then another moment she can be telling me to do the laundry or something like that. <laughs> The Burnett girls were happily settled into their new surroundings, but more upheaval was in the air when their mother married again. Here, you guys, we're doing salad bar because so many different people like different things in their salad. When she first told us that she was engaged to him, I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, there's gonna be a wedding. It's gonna be awesome. But then I started thinking, wait, is he gonna try to be my dad, I started getting concerned and questioning things, and then I got upset, and then it all kind of went downhill from there. And then I would just randomly say to my mom, he is not my dad. Under the circumstances of having lost a parent, and that parent becoming almost bigger than life itself in stature, in reputation, in memory. That is extremely difficult to bring someone else in to fill those shoes because you don't have that person around reminding you that they're not perfect. They all of a sudden become perfect. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anna. I think after about two years, I finally understood he was not trying to take the place of my dad. So now, I don't really mind her being married to him. I actually kind of enjoy it because he's a very nice guy, and my stepbrother Tanner, he's hilarious, and we get along really well. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, Some trickles in there. Why are you always using this? <laughs> Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. Osama, hey, hey, goodbye. That was great. <laughs> we hated him. That was good. Came to school the next day, screaming, cheering. 
even though he's dead and still doesn't take away the pain. If they killed him to bring everybody back, that'd be great. But that can't happen, sadly. So it's good, I guess, you know, justice served, but it doesn't take away what he did. Come on, Bernie, hell of a bin There's justice in the world. The Lord is telling me that revenge isn't yours. I'm going to die. My sister's going to die. Somebody, everybody's going to die. They buy guns, be buy guns, and live your life. The children of 9-11 are beginning a new era. Bin Laden has gone, and the Ground Zero Memorial will be finished in time for their 10th anniversary ceremonies. I can't believe that 10 years have passed. It feels just like yesterday. To be honest, I'm kind of dreading the anniversary. Not so much about the sorrow that's gonna come, but the attention. That's the worst. It's worse than anything that you can feel. But away from the official ceremonies, this year, many children will honour their parent in their own different ways. September 11th was a very public thing, but it was my dad that died. I need to pray for him in my house and my comfort. So, I mean, if I did go out in public, what would people do? They just say, I'm really sorry. Yes, it'd be really genuine, but I mean, would it really help? On September 11th, Thea Trinidad will honour her father's memory in the wrestling ring. My dad was a huge wrestling person. He actually was the one to get me into wrestling. And just to you know, do something like this for him, this would be like the perfect way to like really just show him, like you know, this one's for you, Dad. You know. Thea has followed her father's dream and become a professional wrestler. I'm doing it for me, I'm doing it for my dad. I feel like I'm living my dream and his. He wanted to become a professional wrestler as well. And when I'm there, I think of him every single time. I can see him in the front row, I know he's there. I talk to Michael all the time. I talk to him and I'm like, can you believe our daughter? <laughs> can you believe her? You just hang loose here. You're okay. You know, she's the light of 9-11, I feel. There's a lot of kids like that. You know, and, and that's a good thing. This year, Justin Strata will be raising money for children's brain cancer research. Do you want to say, yeah, I got another guy. He's become a regular fundraiser for the courts. Sign your name, printed name, okay. street address. You cannot say no to Justin. He has energy and he has purpose. And I think my late husband, Tom, would be very proud of Justin for his courage and the strength that he shows. Tonight has been fantastic. The Burnett girls will attend a special ceremony at their father's old university, where they plan to study in the future. The greatest thing that he's given me is sort of a reassurance that anyone can do anything. Everything's possible for a person. Everyone can make a difference in life. He's a hero, he's in heaven, and he's watching us. 
And whenever I see a picture of him, sometimes a little memory will just come in my mind and I'll remember it and smile and think, that was a good time. <laughs> Rodney Ratchford is making plans for his own memorial to his mother on the site of the shack where she grew up. We're here because this is where my mother grew up at. She wasn't born here, but she was raised here. Lived here with her seven brothers and sisters, raised by one mom. This would be a one bedroom shack. As you can see how very small it was, and imagine a shack just sitting here with one bedroom, you got a living room, and then you got the kitchen. That basically was it. Rodney wants to build a garden in his mother's memory. It came to me in a dream. I don't know what it was. I, I was here, and I just seen a garden, and I seen my mom's cemetery. That's just how I seen it in the dream. I just know that this is home to her, so this is always home to me. I believe that she will want me to be on the right path, not going down the bad path, hanging around the wrong people and getting myself into trouble. I think so far now, I done made her very proud. Now, you would ask me back then, I'd have said, man, I'm messing up. She wouldn't like what I'm doing right now, but now, she will have the most biggest smile on her face, and I just know that. This year, Caitlin Langone will mark the 10th anniversary of her father's death at the place she regards as his spiritual home, his fire station. Yes, I remember when the company got it. When I was younger, I used to describe the experience as bittersweet because it's very, very bitter I lost daddy. Like, that sucks. But the part that makes it easier to deal with and easier to go to bed at night was daddy died doing the thing he loved to do the most on earth. And not only was he doing the job he loved the most on earth, but he was helping people and saving other people that day. Like daddy would just start flooring and he'd be like, all right, Tommy, where are we going? <laughs> like, how can you not be proud of that? Like, how does that not make it a tiny bit easier knowing that your person passed doing like some of the greatest work on Earth that they ever did. Wait, mama, let's get something straight. Yeah. No sleeping in. No sleeping yeah, 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 yeah. So there are people who are sitting at home right now who have lives and are able to continue their life because daddy went in and brought them out. That's what makes me feel better as I'm so blessed that daddy was my dad. That like such a fantastically awesome person was my dad.